Good morning, all of you once again. Uh, the subject is it is a it is a subject of engineering design concepts. Uh, I'll be the main subject faculty delivering lectures. I am Dr. M. Murugan. I am professor in another department of mechanical engineering. And uh, my areas of interest are design and manufacturing. I have done my uh, graduation and post graduation from College of Engineering in India. And subsequently, I did my PhD from uh, IIT Chennai. I have been working in this institution for the past 20 years, more than 20 years. And in this particular program, I will be assisted by Mr. Uh, C. Shivakumar. Shivakumar is there. Would you like to say a few words? Please stop. Good morning, one and all. Uh, I am Shivakumar C. And, uh, I am a course faculty especially for mechanical A section and I did my uh, masters in automobile engineering from the MIT and take my B mechanical engineering from Tagore Engineering Punas Chennai. I am Peter Elias, I am Punas Chennai from Department of Mechanical Engineering, Department of Mechanical Engineering. I did my MTech in Policy Engineering, MTech also completed in that. And I am also one of the course faculty of uh, Thank you. And we have Asla Rahmat. Yes. Good morning, one and all. I am Asla Rahmat and uh, I have did my post graduation in College of Engineering in And I did my B in CFL in College of Engineering and Technology in Malaysia. I will be the course faculty for mechanical Thank you. Thank you. So, actually, I will be sharing the uh, limelight with you. But they will be toiling in the background. So they will be helping me in preparing the lectures. Okay, and I will take all the credit by talking to you guys. So they have agreed. Okay, I might be in the another department, they don't have a uh, say. So, uh, no, it, it is not actually like that. Uh, uh, I mean, we are a very, very friendly department. We have uh, uh, a group of faculty members who work together on many projects. So, so we have we have some work division among you, the course evaluation, tutorial evaluation, preparation of uh, these lectures. It all will be done jointly by the team. Okay, so the credit it duly goes to everyone. Now coming to the subject proper. Now this paper is known as uh, engineering design concepts. Now, first of all, I would like to spend some time on pondering why this particular course. Now, before we venture into it, you should know why you should study this. That is the first logical question that everybody must have. Why should I study this particular paper? Now, uh, before uh, I go further, I would like to say that this is not a course available in the Anna University regular curriculum. Either for BA Mechanical or for BA Aeronautical or Automobile. No. In the Anna University regular curriculum, we, we don't have this particular paper. So why should we have this particular course at the, at the early stage of your engineering study? Not only we are introducing something new, but something new is being introduced at the very early stage of your engineering education. Now first of all, Design is the most central activity of the entire engineering domain. We very strongly believe design is the central activity in engineering. Now, so what do you mean by design? Yes? No, I, I want you to respond. When I ask a question, please try to think along the lines and then answer it. What do you understand by the term design? Innovative ideas. Design is innovation. Somebody says design is innovation. Anything else? Creation. Creation. Design is? Creating something. Creativity. Okay. Anything else? Somebody said innovation is design. Somebody said creating is design. Defining the problem. Defining something precisely is design. Okay, what else, what else do you understand by the term design? Visual. Visual. Literally, what do you mean by design? 
something is by design and something is by accident. What do you mean by something by design and something by accident? Something by design means it is it is very calculated, very pre-planned, very arranged. Okay, thought of thought of after very uh, thought of. Okay. And something by accident means something happening spontaneously without any any intervention. Okay. Uh, the, the creation of the world, is it by design or is it by accident? Of course, everybody can have their own ideas. Those believing in God may say that the world is by design, a great design. Okay. The whole world is designed by somebody. When somebody says, okay, it is accident, it is a big bang theory. Okay. Unfortunately, science says the world is created by accident. Big Bang says it is a it is a cruel accident through which the entire universe came to be. Okay, let's not dive out into that. So design is something very intentional, something very conscious. Okay. So design is the central activity in engineering. Now design is essentially creating a new product. When I, when I design something, I am creating a, a new product. It can be anything. It can be designing a pen. It can be designing a beautiful building. It can be designing a system. It can be designing a software. Is it okay? You, you have a particular software which is designed. You have a particular washing machine which is designed. You have a beautiful building which is designed. You have a dam which is designed. Okay, so design is essentially creating a new product. A designer is essentially a problem solver. Designing is something which is essentially problem solving. You have something to be unhappy about. You have a problem that needs to be sorted out. Okay, so you have a lacuna, you have a vacuum, you have a need that needs to be addressed. That needs to be solved. That is what we do when we do design. Design is all purpose. Everywhere, everywhere you have needs. And these needs, they need to be addressed by proper design. In this course, design is taken as a context. To understand the breadth of mechanical engineering. Now, unfortunately, we don't have, and it is also by design, it is also very consciously done, we don't have a paper called Introduction to Mechanical Engineering or Introduction to Aeronautical Engineering. Okay. Which will give us an opportunity to, to expose to you what you will study in your four years of time as mechanical engineer or as aeronautical engineer. In general, as an engineer, what you will be studying in the four years. So here in this paper, what we are, we are going to do is, we are going to take design as a context. Okay, and we will see what is the entire breadth of engineering is, what are all the various domains in engineering, particularly mechanical engineering, and how design is able to connect all this because we said design is the central activity. So it should be able to interconnect the various domains and we have to see, we have to understand how design that uh, does that nicely. Next slide please. Now what is the course objective? Now I am putting what we discussed in a different form. To understand the design as a central activity in engineering, we should understand design as the most important activity in engineering, whatever engineering it is, I didn't say aeronautical engineering or mechanical engineering, whatever engineering you belong to, design is the most central activity. Now, how to design a product? This is the biggest challenge that you would like to address in this particular course. So, what is the scientific method of doing a product design? So where to start? How to proceed? How to conclude a design?
design exercise. This is what we will learn in the subject. What is the scientific approach to design? Then, there are certain basic concepts that you need to understand in engineering design. For example, we say something called a wild of a custom. There is a need. How does the need manifest itself? The need manifests as the wants of a customer. Okay. So, so these, these are some of the concepts. I will elaborate it uh, later, subsequently. These are some of the concepts that we would like you to appreciate and understand. And last but not the least, I would like to give an exposure to the various domains of mechanical engineering, which are which are going to be connected by the central activity called the design. Is it okay? Uh, before I proceed further, uh, on your right, this is the textbook that I would like you to have. Uh, a low price edition is available. It is uh, Kevin Moto and Steve Wood. Product design, techniques in reverse engineering and new product development. It's by Pearson Education and uh, 2004 edition or later. It's fine. Next slide, please. Now, I have certain general course rules. The course lectures and PPTs will be made available through internet on the same day. We will try to do that. So, if you don't follow something, if you want to re listen or due to unavoidable reason you are absent before coming to the next lecture, please make it a point to get the course material, go through, and then come. Lesson plan will again be made available through the internet. Don't miss any class. Learning engineering is a continuous process. Okay, I cannot miss four lectures and then come and sit in the fifth lecture. You will not understand anything. You will lose interest in the subject itself. For no fault of the subject. Okay. So, don't miss deadlines. In this subject, okay, there will be continuous evaluation. As you will be seeing later, you will be submitting roughly some 12 assignments in this particular course. Mm. Uh, 15 assignments in this particular course. Okay. If you everything carry some weightage. So the idea is to make you learn every day. And one of the one of the thing is these all these assignments they have deadlines. After the deadline, the assignments will not be accepted. So don't miss deadlines. Late submission will not be accepted. Late coming to the class will not be entertained. From next class onwards, I will request my colleagues to lock the door because I don't want to be disturbed during my lectures. Next slide, please. The assessments, the course assessment consists of three continuous assessments and one semester end examination. Each assessment consists of four weekly assignments. It carries totally 20% weightage. One term assignment, totally we have three terms in a semester. One term assignment which has 30% weightage. And test, the term test will have 50% weightage. Totally will be evaluated for 100. So this will be done for all the three terms. Okay. So you know the remaining thing. Missing assignments means, means losing grade. I will not repeat. Hereafter, I will not repeat. Missing deadlines, missing assignments means you will be losing grades and nothing can be helped on that count. Next slide, please. All usage in class norms, be in time, take your assigned seats, attendance will not be taken separately, take care of the seats on the writing board and handle them with care, have a separate notebook and file for filing assignments for this particular course. Being in your seat at correct time will ensure your attendance. Feel free to interact. When you have any doubts, if you have any issues, you are free to rise it and discuss with me. Probably if you feel that,
We have too many assignments in this exercise. We cannot check now, but not later. We have listen, sir. Fifteen assignments in a course is bit too much. If you feel like that, I am ready to hear it out. We will thrash it. But once the decision is taken, okay, I will add up to that. Similarly, the small assignments they will have exactly one week set. Can we go back to the previous one? The small assignments, that is four weekly assignments, they will have exactly one week set. That is, I give a problem today. I am going to give. Okay. So probably it needs to be submitted today itself. Okay. It needs to be submitted either on 24th or earlier. I am sorry. It, it, it needs to be submitted on 17th or earlier. That is for the short assignment. The term assignment, it will, it will have exactly two weeks time. Okay. And you have to adhere to these deadlines. Is it okay? If you have any objection to that, you can talk it out in the class. If you don't understand anything or if you don't agree with anything, you are free to write it as an issue and then talk about it. We will sort it out. But once we arrive at a decision, we will sort it out. Next slide. So if, if, if you can, feel free to interact. So whenever you have some doubts, Please don't decide, don't judge your doubts. Don't think this is a very trivial issue, how can I rise before the entire class. Please don't feel like that. Whenever you don't understand anything, raise your hand. Okay, I will hear your question and please permit me to decide whether to address it immediately or in the course of my lecture. So whenever you don't understand something, please stop me. Now, the most important thing is the last point, participate in the teaching learning process. If somebody finds watching outside the window more attractive than listening to me, probably if you go to the third floor and then observe nature, it will be much more beautiful. You can do that. Watching outside the window, I mean, how can I proceed with appreciating nature? Everybody must do that. But you can do it in a better way. That's all I'm saying. If you find weighing through the glasses more attractive, go to the open terrace. It will be much more to have a very beautiful view. The zoo also you can see. Okay. So much of greenery. You don't have a choice to observe so much in your city life. You are welcome to do that. But if you are inside, you have to Participate in the teaching learning process. One biggest difficulty I am going to face is usually I deal with a smaller crowd, 60. Now you are a larger number. So I won't be able to pinpoint on the now I can. I won't be able to very precisely pinpoint and say you are doing this, don't do this. Okay, but it is better you exercise. You are all others now. You can exercise some self-control and participate in the teaching learning process. You will get doubts only when you participate in the teaching learning process. Next slide, please. Now, this is about uh, the introduction. Okay. Now I have exactly 15 minutes before me. Now I am going to, I am going to enter into the subject proper. I am going to teach you today. We are going to discuss rather. Our two things, all that we are going to discuss is about only two things. One is about products and process. So, at the end of the lecture today, I want you to have a very clear idea what we mean by product and what we mean by a process. Any problems? Next slide, please. So the plan of presentation is, I'll discuss about what I mean by products, processes, and then we have a history. Next slide. What is a product? Now because uh, the, the subject, your, your textbook also reads product design. 
many times, and I'll, I'll address this issue at a later stage, people use these terms uh, interchangeably. Something is called engineering design, it's called product design, design process, design engineering. So these are all the terms which are used uh, interchangeably. So it is better we have some clarity. What do you mean by a product? Can somebody help me out? What do you understand a product is? Product? Something. Something which which benefits someone is a product. Can you give me an example of a product? Soap is a product. Can you give me some example? Air conditioner. Air conditioner is a product. Can you give me an example? A car is a product. Beautiful. Can you give me an example? A light is a product. Can you give me an example? Fan is a product. All these things are products. Any doubt? Now let us go into a more detailed understanding of what we mean precisely by a product. Now, as the first uh, statement goes, something that fulfills a societal need is called a product. Something that fulfills a societal need. There is a need for something. Okay. You develop something to cater to that need, to address that need. That is a product. Okay. Uh, uh, a person needs to make his shirt clean after a day's work. So there may be a lot of dirt here and that. So what is the product that fulfills that need? A soap is a product that fulfills that need. Chennai is very hot in summer. You need a, an air conditioner. So that is a societal need and to fulfill that need we are developing a product. Is that made clear? Okay. I need to travel from here to my home which is 20 kilometers away. So this is the need. Not only for me. Please note, generally we are not bothered about this man's need or that man's need. We are bothered about a societal need. So product is something which tries to address the societal need, the need of the society as such. Is it okay? So everybody needs to commute from their place of, uh, I mean from where their uh, house is located to the where they work. So there is a, a need, a genuine need for transportation. That is addressed by designing a variety of products. Please understand, the societal needs are addressed not by a single product, but a bunch of products. To, to spend my day in Chennai, okay, during peak summer, I have a bunch of products. I can have an air conditioner, I can have a fan, okay, I can have a hand fan, or I can opt to sit under a banging tree. Of course, banging tree is not a product. Please understand, banging tree, tree is not a product. We will we'll come to that fine, fine distinction later. But all the other three things that, that I talked about, an air conditioner is a product. A fan, an electrical fan is a product. A hand fan is a product. Hand fan of breathing lab. This is correct. Okay, that is a product. Okay, so, Every societal need is met by a bunch of products, not by a single product. Similarly, the problem of the need of commuting from one place to another. There are variety of products. Like I can have a car, I can have a bike. The third thing is I can have I can have a cycle. Very good. Or I can have to walk. Okay. Or I can use a bus. Here comes, I have not included that. Here comes, many times, we not only deal with products, but product and 
No. Products and services. Products and services. Bus is not a product. I cannot buy a bus. Of course, theoretically I can buy a bus, but for commuting I don't buy a bus. I buy only a ticket. Is it not? For commuting I don't buy a bus, but I buy what? I buy a ticket. What is that? What is the meaning of that? I avail a service. So, many times we are talking about products and services together. In, in modern world, probably 100 years back, products can be separated from services very categorically. But in today's modern world, products and services, they get entangled very deeply. You have a, a cell phone. Is it, cell phone is a product. What is the what, what is the need that it fulfills? <laughs> communication. Please don't communicate using that inside this class. It will be viewed very seriously. I have taken it only as a, an example. Okay. Now, cell phone is a product which is which is supposed to. It is used to communicate. Is it good enough if I just buy a cell phone? No. I need to rope in a, a service provider. Am I right? So, cell phone is one part of the bargain. The other part is the service So, that's what I mean in modern world, products and services, they get entangled. They get integrated. Okay? Now, okay, we'll, we'll go back to uh, go back to the uh, understanding of product. So, something that fulfills a societal need is a product. Any doubts in that? Now, every product must have an intrinsic value. Is it clear? Every product must have an intrinsic value. Any doubts in that? No? I gave you enough time. Now you are going to explain. What do you mean by every product having an intrinsic value? What do you literally mean by the term intrinsic? No. Okay. Can you literally explain what intrinsic means? Listen. No. Sir, near. No, please don't feel hurt if I pinpoint you and then ask something. This is just to ensure whether you are with me or not. I should know. I have 200 people around. My job is to carry you people along with me. Is it okay? So don't feel hurt, don't feel bad if I pinpoint you and then ask some doubts. What do you mean by intrinsic? Why oh, you have not asked? Sir, I am not understanding that word. Why oh, you have not said that? That is why we are suffering now. You, you get my point? You don't understand something? You ask. Intrinsic is something which is inherent in it. Okay, it possesses that. So, every product must have its own value. It satisfies certain needs. It has its own purpose. Its own use. It, it, I mean, it, the, the second point is putting the first point in a, a different perspective. That's all. Okay. Every product has many explicit functions. Implicit. Many implicit functions. Every product, it has many explicit functions, many implicit functions. What do you mean by an explicit function? Explicit function is something which is obvious, which is well understood. I will give you an example. Okay. Uh, okay. So what, what is this? Is it a product? What is the purpose of this product? 
writing to write. Okay, it is it is a, it is a method of communication. I can I can write with it. Okay, I can write with the pen. So the expressive function of a pen is what to write. To write. Everybody knows. The expressive function of a pen is to write. Is that all that a pen can do? For so what else do you use a pen? Okay. If I want to point something, I can I can go here and then say it has some intrinsic value, it has some explicit and it can be used as a pointer. Number one, this is this is an implicit and indirect function. Okay. Anything else? Anything else for which I can use my pen? For? Pick or uh, uh, pick something. Pick. No, I am not hearing you. That's my problem. To pick something. To pick something. Pick. To pick something. Okay. You, you, okay. That there is a there is a neighbor uh, sitting next to you. Uh, he is slightly dozing off. You want to just put your pen on him and then ask him to wake up before the teacher sees him. Fine. Anything else? Anything else for which a pen can be used for? Pen fight. Okay, I have not heard about it. Okay, pen fight. It seems many of you have heard about it. Fine, I will accept it as a function. Anything else? So to wind an audio cassette. What? To wind an audio cassette. So to wind an audio cassette. Excellent! To wind an audio cassette. Okay. To wind the audio cassette, you can use a pen. Okay. Uh, when I was I was having this class, I talked about uh, uh, using this writing pad. Somebody tried to lift the writing pad with their pen. I don't know whether it is somebody here. They tried to lift the so it is used as a lever. In this case, the pen is used as a a mini lever. He doesn't have anything else. So he wants to use it as a lever for lifting the riding pad. Okay. I can use, uh, I mean, not very, I can use pen for mini. See, I have a habit. I personally have a habit to whenever I have some cash here, I try to use it as a protection for my cash. I, I put everything on that to use my pen as if it is a lid. You, you get my point. So, pen has now the stated function is something many products over the period of time you you develop a lot of indirect functions also for that particular product. Many times, many times what happens is the primary purpose for which the product is designed may get sidelined. And the other functions may get some predominance. That is why as a product designer, I should worry about I should worry about the, the multifaceted nature of a product. I'll tell you, I can give you a very categorical example. The, the original primary purpose was something, okay? There are some secondary applications, secondary uses, but the secondary uses gaining prominence, I can give more of examples. Okay, one classical example is cell phone. As the name itself indicates, what is the purpose of a cell phone? Specific? Is it to talk? The primary purpose of a phone, phone means sound, is it? The primary purpose of any phone is to Talk. Now, what is the primary way at least some people, not you, some people use cell phones? Facebook. Is it by texting? Is it by? It is by messaging. You understand? So, the primary, so, no, the company that to redesign the whole cell phone. You guys, you don't know what pressure you are having, not you. The user who changed the utility itself. You put a lot of pressure on the product designer. Now, he originally designed it to talk. Now, what is the primary purpose for which it is being used? Texting. So, I have to redesign it so that the, the, the keypad is what? Quad Q. 
Ki, like a typewriter, or I should go and then improve my touch screen so that I can text it with ease. You get my point. Now, some, some secondary function has taken over the primary function. Now, what happens to the product designer? He has to sweat. He has to work hard to redesign the product so that the product needs not only the primary function for which it, it was intended, but also these secondary functions. So, this dynamics you have to understand. So, when you design a product, you should comprehensively analyze what are the things for which this product is going to be used. Okay? Now, usually, any product, it consists of, usually any product is a system. Usually, any product is a system and it consists of many subsystems and components. What do I mean by, what do I mean by my product being a system? I am not, because if I use, I mean, you are absolutely right, he said, when I say product is a system, it consists of many of the products inside it, that's what he said, he is absolutely right, but, but to avoid confusion, I would only say, because product consists of product means, it creates a confusion, I would say a system consists of many subsystems, do now, if you take a cycle, of course, I am going to discuss about it in detail. If you take a cycle, a cycle consists of many subsystems. There is something called a steering subsystem. A cycle is a total system. But a cycle is a total system. So, it has subsystem meant for steering. It has subsystem meant for power delivery. It has subsystem meant for braking. It has subsystem for external communication by bell. <coughs> communication with the to outside the system. Do you understand? So I can have all that I'm trying to say is in modern context, every product is a is a complex thing. It consists of many, many, many subsystems. And these subsystems they have to interact with each other they have to interact with the outside world also. Now the next point that I want to make, though it may, it may appear non-technical, this is also very, very important. A product is something which is, which is made for a market. Okay. The idli that your mom made today morning, is not a product by my definition of product. Okay. On the other hand, if your dad gave you 20 rupees and then asked you to have a breakfast at a hotel, that is a product. Or service, depending on how you use it. Or you are able to make a distinction. Okay. The idli that your mom made is not a product. But the idli that you bought a saranabhavan is a product. What is the difference? Something is made for the market. Something is meant for selling. Then it is a product. So when I say product, it is something which is which is made for market. Why should I bother about it? Because market means competition. I am not the only person who is going to make it least. There have been many people going to make it least. So my idli must be very suave, it should be very delicious, all that comes into the picture. So how I design my idli makes all the difference. What is the process of making this particular idli is becoming more and more significant. So a product is something which is made for the market. So that means the moment I say something is made for the market, you have to compete. Market is a place where many products and services they compete with each other. 
many products and services, they compete with each other in the market. So, market means competition. So, my product must be superior in performance, shipping costs. So, all these considerations, all these calculations have to be written when I design my product. So, if my competitor is using a particular technology, mine must be much more better. It should be a superior technology, it should be economical. All these issues come into picture, and that is why I make that point very significant. Product is something which is made for the that, that, that brings in uh, uh, a set of complexities into the, the job of product design. Excellent. Now, have you understood what a product is? Yes or no? Sure? You guys understand what a product is? Okay. Now, can somebody say what a product is? Probably I can, I can get you a mic. Yes? Who would like to volunteer? Many characteristics of a product. Yes? Quick. We don't have much time to lose. What do you understand by product? Please, please, please talk. No, this is part of your education. Please take it from me. You guys must learn how to talk to an audience. Yes. Something that fulfills. What do you mean by it? Can you put it in some other words? What? No, the point is I don't want you guys to repeat what I have given. You have to process it in your mind and then come out with your own solutions, your own way of expressing it. Yes? Okay. Your father gave you a lift to come to the college today morning. Is it a product or service? Any objection? Yes, somebody said no. Why? Father only gave. Your father will not give lift to somebody who gives him 100 rupees, 200 rupees, 500 rupees. No. He will shout at him. So father giving you a lift to come to college, it is not offering a service. Do you understand? Okay. Is, is that clear? What you said is right. You would like to try? Yes. Product is something that can satisfy the necessity, comfort and make something convenient for the people. Very good. A product is something which makes people comfortable, satisfying certain human needs. All this is a product. And above all, what is important is a product is something which is made for market. Now, what do we mean by a process? Please remember, a process is a very generic term. We use it in different contexts. Did I use it in today's lecture earlier? I did. Yes. Oh, that is one process. Anyway, in, in any other context, did I use? No, no. Uh, somebody said it. Teaching, learning process. There is another context in which. So this is something which we use very widely, many times liberally also. Okay. Teaching learning process or designing process. Okay. Now let me start with a very restricted definition of process. I'll feel comfortable later to elaborate it. Okay. Here, right now, what I mean 
process has a multiple meanings, as I told you earlier. So now, what do I mean by a, by a process is, a predetermined sequence of operations, a predetermined sequence of operations, leading to, leading to realizing a particular process. Now, now I have restricted my definition of process. In today's discussion, probably for, for some more classes also, process by process, what I mean is a predetermined sequence of operations that helps me to realize a Okay. See, please remember, it is the, see, we want to design a, a particular product. When we design a particular product, it is not, designing itself is not an end in itself. Okay. Uh, there is a saying, if you write in a paper, if you just write sugar and then try to lick it, it will not, it will not uh, taste sweet. You get my point. Designing is not something which is an end in itself. Designing must lead to something else. What is that? Realizing it, manufacturing it, making it. Fine. Is it okay? So, design is not something which is an end in itself. Design for what? Designing is something which we have to execute and then realize it as a product or service. Okay? You design a beautiful building. Then the complete design is to be handed over to a contractor and then the building has to be constructed. Then only I can use that. Design a beautiful automobile. It has to be manufactured. Then only I can drive it. You design a beautiful software. Okay, you write a beautiful software to, to execute a particular functionality. Okay. So, but that needs to be code. You have to write the program for it. It needs to be executed. Then only you have a product. So, designing is not an end in itself. The process through which you realize your design of a product is called is called what? What I restrict to as process. Yes. Like a product having many sub-assemblies and sub-sub-assemblies, a main process will also have many sub-processes. Okay? That is the main process going on here. What is the main process? PG. Okay? There can be a small sub-processes like writing down notes. Okay? Or clarifying doubts. You understand? So, so, now I restrict my definition of process as a sequence of, a predetermined sequence of events through which I realize my product. Now let me take a very simple example. Let me take a very simple example. Hereafter I am going to as, as, a, as a practice, in every class we are going to take a product and then analyze it. Okay? We are going to make every class a product. We are going to take at the end of the lecture, we are going to take one product and then analyze in detail because that's what this, this course is all about. This course is about product design. So, we are going to take up a, a product every day and then analyze how it has been designed. How the various functions are, how the various functions are fulfilled by this particular product. Is it okay? Now, today the product I have chosen, say I want to study is easy for me, not for you. You guys can, can take up uh, heavier stuff. But I wanted to start with a, a lightweight thing for me. So I have taken a pencil as a product. First of all, is it satisfying all my definitions of product? What are the definitions? Does it have a value? Yes. What is it? 
¿Estás en la de la Dios? ¿Ok? Yes. ¿Ok? Is it, is it made for market? I, I bought it from a shop. So this is made for market. So this is a Now before, before going further, see this product, it evolved over time. I took pencil very purposely because pencil has roughly 500 years of history. So this product has taken various shapes over the period of time. Depending on the technology available, at that point of time, the pencil would have appeared different. Is it okay? So I am always interested in the history of technology because it teaches me how to proceed further. How this pencil evolved over a period of time? That is very dear to me because then only I can meaningfully go further in designing a pencil, not necessarily designing a pencil alone, in designing anything else. Now, the Greeks and Romans in the early 15th century, they used, even before that, they used metallic rods to write on the papyrus, which is the paper of those days. Okay? It is made from wood pulp, the very thin paper, not the fine one that you are using, but that was the paper available. It is also called vellum. In today, somewhere I was reading, I don't know. I don't know where. Okay. So, uh, so, Greeks and Romans, they used metallic rocks, primarily lead. If you take lead and then write on a paper, Please, you have to do it very carefully. Let this carcinogenic. Okay. People didn't know at that point of time. So they were using legs. Okay. And they used to use that to write on papers. Metallic rods were used to write on papers. Then, by early 15th century, graphite, huge deposits of graphite were discovered in England. Okay. This graphite sticks, these graphite sticks, they were found to produce, nowadays please don't worry, your pencil doesn't have any lead, though you call this as lead, it doesn't have any lead. Because lead has a lot of disadvantages. It is very expensive, it is very heavy. If this is made up of lead, probably I cannot handle it so easily. It will be very heavy. It has very high density. Okay, and above all, it is carcinogenic. So it doesn't have any lead. Okay. So people use graphite sticks to write on paper. Since these sticks are very brittle, what they did was, in the earlier days, they bound it using some thread. You have a very fragile stick, so if I write with that, it may break. How many strengthen it? You, you bind it with some you, know, you appreciate the, the logic of it. You have a very fragile stick, you want to write with it. You want to make it stronger. How will you do it? Simple. You just try to wind some rope around it or you encase it in sheepskin. Okay? Or on the pole of the encase for me, you will be able to. You give you, you an additional strength. Then later, the carpenters started encasing these graphites in wooden case. Is it okay? Can I have an next slide? So this is a very oldest known wood case pencil. You can see the graphite. The graphite is not in a cylindrical form. The graphite is also a clay. You just sandwich it, sandwich it between two wood plates. So this was a very early pencil. So this is how it evolved, of course. Nowadays pencil you all know. I didn't include a picture. Now, now the exercise is for you. Can you tell me how do you make today's pencil? Of course, I will give you my answer at the end of the lecture. Of course, it's not my answer. 
I will give you the answer at the end of the lecture. But can you think of how to make today's pencil? How can you manufacture? Graphite? Graphite in the all must be cylindrical. Now can I can I take it? I mean he he's saying so many words. Can I can let me put my words into his mouth and then huh? I take a cylindrical rod of graphite, take a wooden plank, drill a hole, and then insert that very carefully. And finally I sell my pencil at three rupees or four rupees rupees. That, that's why I said any product that you design is meant for market. The economics must always be kept in mind. See, first I should be able to get a cylindrical rod of graphite, which is very, very difficult. Then how to make it a perfect cylinder? Put it in a lathe. Have you worked on lathes, isn't it? You all have worked on lathes. So does it there are a lot of issues associated. See, this this subject is precisely to make you appreciate all these difficulties. What is the difficulty in turning a lead in a lead? Can somebody tell me? But it is very brittle. And not only that, it is very slender. I want to make so much of such a large length in a lead. If I bring my cutting tool, by the force of the cutting tool itself it may break. Then how will I make a small hole inside this wood? You can use a mold on the wood and then insert the lead and stick the wood. So have the wood set, two parts. You are designing it now, I am not doing anything. You have come out with this is how a product designer must think. So don't drill a hole for such a long depth under 320 very nicely. Please never mistake me, I am not ridiculing anybody. Okay. Somebody said with real hindsight that it has to be carefully inserted. Because that is true. I am not ridiculing you or anything. I am just trying to I am trying to uh, teach you how do this process must be learned? What should we carefully introduce? Because if we have a hole, this is already brittle. But he has found out a, a nicer solution. Have it in two plants. Okay. Put the graphite in. Move it. Then, how to make the graphite drop? I have not made it now. See, many times, throughout the lecture, I will be repeating this. Necessity is the mother of invention. This is a very, very uh, prophetic uh, statement. Necessity is the mother of invention. What does it mean? Somebody from the back. What do you understand by necessity being the mother of invention? Huh? No, it has some more meaning to it. Necessity being the mother of invention. Necessity the need is what makes it create. See, when you, when you feel the need, when you when you feel the need, when you have no other recourse, you keep on inventing new and new things. Okay. So what happened was for graphite suddenly during 16th century, they have found a, a new application. Graphite is again another important uh, material. Okay. Graphite, I don't know, oh, what was special about graphite? Graphite is what is graphite? It is, it is, it is also carbon. Can you tell me one excellent pro pro problem of uh, property of Good, but what wh wh is one, one excellent property of graphite? Good, good. 
As mechanical engineers, graphite means something. What is it? Excellent. Graphite is a lubricant. It is one of the solid lubricants. Generally, the lubricant, what do you think? No, lubricant is something which reduces friction. Whenever I say lubricant, what comes to your mind immediately? It's a liquid. Oil. Whenever I, I say lubricant, what comes to your mind immediately is a can you think of a solid which is having a lubricating property? Generally, no. But there are few solids. Good, good. Not molybdenum? Molybdenum? Disulfide. There are two solids which have excellent lubricating properties. They are you should now forget graphite and molybdenum disulfide. Now forget this. As mechanical engineers, you need to. I mean, please forgive me if I repeatedly say mechanical engineers. I am basically a mechanical man. It is equally applicable to aeronautical engineering also, any engineering for that matter. I am a prisoner of habit also. So, molybdenum disulfide is, is a solid lubricant. Graphite is a solid. So they, they found a very interesting application for this graphite. These graphites can be used for cannon balls. You know what, what, what a cannon ball is? Okay. So see, when something finds a military application, all other application must stop. That is true 200, 300 years back, it is true even today. Okay, that is a curse of man. When something has a military application, so immediately the crown decided to close, I mean, closely protect all the graphite mines inside England. Because it is no more a pencil which is made out of the graphite, it is a cannonball. At that point of time, it is equal to a nuclear weapon. Please. Think in the context of time. We are talking about 300 years back. 300 years back, a new technology in cannon ball is as good as a nuclear warhead today. So the graphite has become very scarce. So only graphite powders could be smuggled out of. Smuggled out of. Somebody must read. There, there, there are a few interesting websites on the history of pencils. Somebody can note down and then you can just Google history of pencil, you will get a lot of information. They, they smuggled out the graphic powders, okay. And then these powders were mixed with clay. Why are they mixed with clay? It is gas. And also clay uses a sort of body and then put it in the fire. Now the clay will strengthen. Fine clay. A clay, if you put in fire, what will you get? Brick. Brick is relatively strong, is it not? So inside this clay, you mix with some graphite also. That is how the leads of today are made. Even today, these leads are made like this. Your Indian graphics teacher would have told, you should use only two edge pencils. If they are not. Why? Because there is more of clay inside two edge pencil. That means it will not be very soft. It will be more hard. That means the drawing will not get much. It has science behind it. So by varying the proportion of clay and graphite, you could get legs of different hardness. Now, can we go to the next? Now, now pencil, okay, I'll come back to this later. Can we go to the next slide? No, no. I will show you now, okay, I will show you now a video on how to make a pencil.
I love to draw, mostly for fun. And I love using a pencil because you can correct your mistakes. And that's pretty important if you're doing a homework assignment. You know what? I never thought much about pencils before, where they come from or how they're made. But it's actually pretty interesting. I remember as a kid sharpening a pencil and how good it smelled. And can you believe it? I actually thought they drilled a hole in the wood and put the lead in it. And it's not lead either. It's a combination of graphite and clay. Clay. Weird, huh? Well, anyway, the graphite gets sandwiched between two layers of wood. But I'm getting ahead of myself here. First, the best pencils in the world are made from incense cedar grown in the forests of Northern California and Southern Oregon. There are lots and lots of incense cedar trees around because the forests they grow in are carefully managed by people who care about what happens to the trees. Every year, there's always more incense cedar trees grown than are harvested, which means there will be plenty of trees around for my kids, their kids, and beyond. And it means the animal habitat is protected too. But not all pencils are made from incense cedar. Some are made from tropical rainforest trees. By buying only cedar pencils, you and I can be good to the environment and use a renewable resource. Once the tree is harvested, it gets sawn into pencil stock like this. And then it goes to a factory in California and gets made into what's called slats. From here, it's off to a pencil manufacturer, and that's where the real fun begins.
Wow, pretty amazing stuff, huh? Did you have any idea of what it takes to make a good old number two pencil for writing or math or even doodling? I guess I never thought about it much before, but it's actually pretty cool. And think, it all starts by planting a tree. It is important for us because we need to understand the various manufacturing processes also. Then only we can design the then only we can design the product more effectively. Because the ultimate aim is to realize the product. So we should have a very thorough understanding of the processes also. We'll continue our discussion in depth tomorrow. So Thursday, sharp ten fifty five. All of you, please be in this place.